Welcome everybody to That Tracks, the podcast about the shape of roller coaster tracks. This week's episode entirely about tubular steel. Nick, take us back to that fateful day in 1959 where Aerodynamics introduced the first tubular steel roller coaster at... I have no idea. <laughs> Six Flags. <laughs> Disneyland. Oh, really? That was the first one? Matterhorn. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I didn't. I should have known that. I'm disappointed. Should have been myself. known. <laughs> What's your favorite tubular steel roller coaster? Oh, dear. I don't know. <laughs> uh, name, mo- name some of them. And most of them. It's, Is Space uh, Mountain at Walt yeah. Disney World? Probably that. Okay. What there else? What are some of the other ones? Uh, literally most things. Literally most of them, except for like Gwazi. Oh, okay. You know, what does that no mean? Wooden, it's like a circle. Tubular. Oh. And that's what the track goes on. That's the track, is a circle. Oh, okay. So yeah, most yeah. roller coasters. Most roller coasters. So nowadays, Space Mountain yeah. wouldn't be that. Probably like Velocicoaster. Velocicoaster, for that, sure. All B&Ms. Yeah, that would be up there for me. Yeah, that's not a B&M though. Oh. That was, what does that mean? But That's the manufacturer. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. What's your favorite roller coaster? My favorite roller coaster? Yeah. I don't know. Actually, uh, Mako. Oh, okay. Yeah. At SeaWorld. It's good. It's a real good roller coaster. More than Velocicoaster? Yeah. Why? Because Velocicoaster, you can't ride on on repeat all day long. Yeah, you're right. You can ride Mako just like from sun up till sundown, <laughs> no issues whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. You get off and you get on. It's like riding the train. It doesn't not, really give you like like motion, any sort of like motion. Sickness you don't get or, banged around. Yeah, it's very you're not upside like, down. Yeah, like up and down. Yeah, it's just up and down airtime. But that know? does scare me. Why? Because it's so much. So there's so many heights with Mako. Yeah, yeah. You're scared of that? <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified of heights. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Even when you're like strapped to a large train, I do feel more safe being strapped to a large train. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have really described it as that, but I don't know. I just feel safe in a big train. Yeah. I do feel more safe on a roller coaster, but it's the it's the airtime in Mako that that freaks me out a little bit. Okay, like when your cheek leaves the seat, your it's... cheek one cheek, <laughs> the other one stays on. <laughs> I try, I try to keep Flopping cheeks around. on the seat as much as possible. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's terrifying. So it's but been three weeks since you've been here, Nick. It has. I so much has changed. Oliver is walking. I walked into the front door of the house, and Oliver walked up towards the front door yeah. and i was just like he's a different kid already and then immediately turned around and said Ooh, yeah he's like, the, <laughs> i don't I know about that, that guy in three weeks i gotta go yeah he's like <laughs> the majority of my life i really want oliver to like me that's one of my goals i think that he he like smiles from a distance at me but he's very like i don't really know you yet yeah he doesn't do that with anybody yeah i mean he does that with everybody is what i mean like he doesn't like he doesn't run up and just hug grab strangers. Towards, yeah, but I want you're not a stranger. Sure, but that's my goal though. Like I want him to like be excited to see me. Jackson's okay. cool. Jackson and I we played monster trucks already today. We're doing good. But yeah. I'm gonna get Oliver to like me. That's my goal to get everybody to like me. So I believe in you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been forever. So we don't particularly prefer to do do our episodes over Zoom as opposed to being in person. Right. Like we would much rather always be in person. It is a lot harder for me to edit a Zoom episode. Yeah. Because I, there's a, del- a delay. Yeah. And I just feel like we're like, you can be present over Zoom, but there's just something more personable, obviously, about being in person. So right. we're happy to be back. But that is just life sometimes where mm-hmm. we just have really busy schedules. We both have like full time jobs that we work and it Kids. just be like that sometimes. So. Sometimes it just happens. And we don't live close to one another either. Like I live no. in Lakeland and it's a pretty decent drive to get to your house. Yeah. So that's just how it's it goes. Five hours. <laughs> Who knew? Sometimes it feels like that. Sometimes it does I take that. It can feel like five hours sometimes. Yeah. Anytime you're traveling through Champions Gate. Ugh, it's the worst. For those of you who live in Central Florida or have traveled to Central Florida and just driven like the I-4 corridor, it's just brutal sometimes. Yeah. Like, and sometimes it makes no sense whatsoever. Like you're going to be sitting worst. in traffic and then you get through a certain point and you're just like, why? Like you just start moving. You're like, okay, I guess yeah, we're going. There was nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing there. It's so bizarre. Sometimes it feels like LA traffic a little bit, mm. which is a stretch. I know people in LA will be like, no, you have no idea, but. I have sat in LA traffic before and it, it feels similar. I think there's just obviously a lot more people in Los Angeles. Yeah. LA's on my mind because I'm like three weeks away from my Disneyland trip. LA's on your mind. Yeah. That's your favorite song. Is that a song? No. <laughs> Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm feeling like Miley Cyrus, ready to hop off the plane oh, at LAX. At LAX with your dreams and a cardigan. Yeah. Do you you typically fly to John Wayne when you go? Out no, there? I've never flown to John Wayne. Really? Only to LAX. Only to LAX. Yep. I only have ever flown to LAX as well. Yeah. John Wayne is easier to get to Disneyland. Right. But the um, the flights are less frequent, harder to get. Yeah, and more expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like LAX, I save some money by flying there. Definitely. Even if I'm Ubering from LAX to Disneyland. Like right. Factoring in that cost still makes it cheaper flying. And I sometimes I fly from Tampa because I live actually closer to Tampa International than I do uh, MCO. Mm. So, but I'm very excited. I will be flying out of Tampa to go to Disney. Let me ask you this. Do you ever think or like feel like you're going to see like a famous person on your flight? 1000%. Yes. Do you ever? Especially flying to LAX. I've never seen a famous person on my flight before. Me neither. I know people that have. Yeah? Yeah. But I, yeah, I, 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 I land in Los Angeles and immediately think that I'm surrounded by celebrities. We saw BTS at LAX. Oh, that's fun. Did Was you say hello to them? I think. No, they were like Way swarmed. Oh. Like, by, by people or just by like, by security, by people, yeah. by everything. It was it was a, a sideshow extravaganza. You're really not the type of person to like go up and say something to them anyways. No. I am. What are you going to say to BTS? <laughs> Hi. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> and they're going to go. We've kind of talked about this before, but I make the assumption when I like meet a celebrity that we're going to be best friends. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I do. I saw. Um, I couldn't imagine you being best friends with BTS. The entire group. Yeah, probably not. But I still would like to meet them, maybe get a picture or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, there's certain times, obviously, where I don't want to, like, bother people. Especially, like, if they're in the theme parks, like, with their family on vacation. I don't want to, like, disturb the peace. But if they're being swarmed already, like, in the middle of an airport, then... Yeah, why not pile why on? Not the chaos? <laughs> what the heck? Why not make it even harder for them? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I, I think there's obviously certain moments. But I, in, for, in, like, I just like meeting people. Whether they were a celebrity or not, I liked I enjoy meeting people, strangers. Okay. I love meeting strangers. <laughs> I do. <laughs> this is Nick. You're the person that your parents warned you about. Yeah. <laughs> Quit talking They're to like, strangers. don't talk to strangers. And Nick's like, I think I will. Well, but <laughs> but at what point do you like you at what point at some point in life that changes though, right? Because like you go to college, you got to talk to strangers. Yeah, that's true. Or Once you are you a friends. responsible adult. Yeah, well, that's what I am. Then you can talk. I don't know. <laughs> then you can talk to strangers. <laughs> I do. I feel like I just, I really, I don't think people understand how much I love people. Yeah. I don't think anyone can understand it. There are people out there that understand it because they are the same as me, but I really do love people so much. And I just want to like know everybody's life story. Okay. And people would look at that and be like, that's not true. Like, I don't trust that, but it is so true. I'm, I'm serious like strangers at disney it's the best i love talking to strangers at disney yeah like when you, be, s- you could have your entire book wow you could write a book called strangers at disney that would be so cool and you like you like obviously Coffee, it's like it's like people of new york yeah you rename everybody but you just like write a uh each chapter is like each person that you got to know their story you take a picture of them standing in front of a castle yeah it's just use uh, use that that is that is that plagiarism Probably not. Okay. You're like, as you're writing your own story. Well, I mean, you're not, but you're like taking their idea. Like right? their life? No, no. People of New York. Have you heard of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they go out, they take a photo of this person. Right. It's like a fancy photo. And, they and then they share, their, share their story. I don't so think like, so. like, that's already a thing. Yeah. I don't you can do so. it, right? It's just called journalism. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> I think, though, question, and I think I already know the answer to this question. 32. Are you, mm. <laughs> Are you the type of person... Where on a flight, if you're by yourself, obviously with your, if you're with your family, you're going to be focused on. I that. don't talk to anybody on yeah, the flight if I'm by sense. myself. That's so tragic. You Why put your is that tragic? On. Well, it's not, but it's just like not everybody wants to be talked to. I Nick. know that. I know, <laughs> and and I have very good social awareness as well. Like I can understand if they're like, nah, not feeling this. And yeah. then I'm like, well, okay, well, I guess I'll go back to my movie. But if they engage, man, we're going to be best friends by the end of that flight. Okay. I get, I know that that is annoying to people and I get that. And, and I do, I really do have enough social awareness to like pick up on like the nonverbals where they're like, don't talk to me anymore. And I'm like, okay. But if it's my friend, like if we were next to each other on a flight and you were like, don't talk to me anymore, I'd be like, well, now my feelings are hurt. Okay. <laughs> Even if there was like, what if I told you beforehand that I was like, Hey, 
there's a new movie that I haven't seen yet. That yeah, I'm I would very excited. I to would watch be like, oh, plane. watch your movie. Okay. Yeah, for sure. You wouldn't be like, but as soon as your movie What's ends, over here, I'd Let's... watch the credits and then I'd look at you like, what are you gonna do now? What's your next move? And then I'd be like, the <laughs> <laughs> next movie. <laughs> No, no, no. No, my best friend is that way. He's very much like, don't talk to me. Like, headphone noise canceling headphones on. And it's like... I would talk to you. I'm I'm just joking around. I wouldn't yeah, but ignore you, you. No, but you wouldn't want to engage in, in like... Like, I'm talking like, we can have... You can have deep conversations with people on an airplane. Yeah, no, I've, I've sat on a plane by <laughs> myself next to somebody and not talked to them. I've done that too, because I picked up on their nonverbals. But I've also sat next to people and learned their life story. Francie tells me often like you're the type of person where when you get off the plane i'm gonna see you and you're gonna be like oh i'm at his wedding <laughs> like i'm now one of the groomsmen oh, at that person's well. wedding because we got to know each other so that'd well. be nice i do that in locations you really do speak to, like you talk to a lot of people yeah but i wouldn't i don't talk to people in, in where they have no out yeah oh true 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 you they're, I mean? like, they're trapped on a plane with me for five hours but from orlando you... to lax yeah Sometimes you hit a moment, though, where it does, like, if you have engaged in conversation, where do you end it? Do right. you know what I mean? Like, at then what you're point... just, as soon as you start it, so you, you're in a conversation for five hours. Mm, sometimes, but not always. Sometimes it's okay to, like, you know, you, I, I say go your separate ways, um, symbolically speaking, because you're go not Go back going. to your crossword puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I just really love people, okay? Okay. I'm not, I, there's nothing wrong with it. I love it when people like that listen to the podcast or follow on Instagram come up and talk to me in the parks. I love it so much. I love hearing like how they found the podcast or how they started watching your YouTube channel or how they like found me on Instagram. I enjoy that very much. I do uh, like talking to people. Yeah. And I will talk to everybody. Um, but there, most of the times when I'm at the park, I do have stuff to do. Well, yeah, I was going to say sometimes like limited it's, time. It's, I've been at the parks with you before, especially like on an opening day of a festival yeah. and it's challenging sometimes it's it's i don't want to say challenging and and spin it into this like negative thing because it's obviously very exciting that you have that yeah. many people that support you but when you do have like things to get done or taken care of it can become challenging trying to get those things checked off your list for sure yeah but i would imagine that's how it is for like a lot of people that do put their lives out there for the general public when they have to get things done it's like okay this is getting a little complicated but yeah. that's just par for the course you know yeah anyway i'm glad that you are okay with talking to people who watch your videos because that's how we became friends oh yeah that's true so thanks you're welcome <laughs> we were stuck on a plane together no. and now we have a podcast <laughs> now you guys know the backstory Ooh, what if we recorded a podcast episode on a plane one day? Uh, the background noise would kill me yeah the you would i would be like what are we doing up here <laughs> just this noise the whole time <laughs> I would I would love it. We could like pull people in from the flight. Hey, you want to answer this question? <laughs> the, the flight attendant, the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys. I don't think that people would be okay <laughs> with that. I don't think you're supposed to like approach the cockpit. Yeah, probably not. No. <laughs> but anyways, we're back together. So <laughs> we did it. Everybody. Here we are. Um, also, I really appreciate your your tracks moment today. That was good. Oh yeah. Really full circle. When I really went crazy. into the other room, that's when I figured that's that you out. Came up with I that. had I had the idea. And I was gonna like, I, I don't know. I felt like if I asked you what your favorite tubular steel roller coaster was, you were gonna say Guazi, and I was gonna be like, Nick, what are you doing? You thought I was gonna get it wrong. Yeah, set me up for. Failure. I was setting you up for. I was setting you up to get laughed at. <laughs> Thank um, you so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out pretty good because I, I I didn't know or I had learned that uh, what's it called, bobsleds Matterhorn was the first tubular steel, but I'd forgotten about it. That's actually really cool though that that was the first ever. Yeah. That's really fast. 1959. And um, makes it smoother. Bob Gurr. Am I saying that wrong? No, you're not saying that wrong. Okay. He was he was who invented or created it. Well, it was part of the team. That he, he was part of the team. Yeah. Bob Gurr is a transportation guy. Right. So like yeah. he has a neck tattoo of uh, the monorail. Yeah. He's yeah. like a 90 year old man with a neck tattoo. I love it. He's on my like list of people that I would love to meet. Yeah. I think I'm running out of time. Ugh. I mean, he's 90 years old. Jeez, man. I mean, it's real. It is real, but we didn't have to say it. Yeah, He could have just been like, I hope that I get to meet him one day <laughs> before he's dead. Yeah, well, that's, what I, that's basically what I meant. I didn't say it like that. I said I felt like I'm running out of time. Hmm. I feel that way about some celebrities. 
Who are you running out of time with? Well, I would love to meet Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World, but also feel like I'm running out of time. Mm. Anthony Hopkins? But you know what? Not Anthony. Who's the guy that's Gene Gene Hackman? I don't know who that is. He's he's still kicking. Like the paparazzi are like trying to track him down for some reason because mm. he's like super old and frail looking. He's like hiding. He's not hiding, but he's just like he doesn't come out of his house very often. And when he does, they're like, oh. you know, that's sad. I do feel for people that have to live like that. That would be exhausting. Mm-hmm. What do you want to talk about today? You want to talk about news right now, or do you want to do? Well, did you ex- have any fun like experiences over the week, the course of the week? I know you did some things that were fun. If I you did. need help, <laughs> stuff <laughs> you know, that was remember, fun. Or I could help you. We went to Magic Kingdom for the eclipse. Yeah, which was fun. Yeah, you got that's to see the eclipse. So in Florida, we didn't have like we had like fifty eight percent coverage. Yeah. Um, we saw sunny eclipse, right? Was Jackson, he, what was he celebrating? No, he was just there. Oh. <laughs> he's, he's just a robot. Um, we went on, what's it called? Barnstormer. Jackson rode Barnstormer twice in a row. Okay. Cause the wait times were so low. That wasn't his first time on Barnstormer. No, but he hadn't been on a roller coaster for a long time. Okay. And then he rode it again. He loved it. He had such a good time. And then we're like, well, what about Seven Doors? He's like, yeah, let's go ride it right now. And I was like, there's a 105-minute wait for Seven Doors. I was like, it's, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. If we start here, we're going to like be home at midnight. Right. Um, so I was like, no, we'll do it. We'll book it again for another time. And I made a reservation for tomorrow, Sunday, Yeah. to go and ride it. And then this morning he woke up and he's like, I don't want to ride it. And I'm like, what, <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? He's changed his mind. Why? Yeah, so he changed his mind. So I think what we're going to try to do is we'll go to Magic Kingdom and we'll ride Barnstormer again. Because he was like yeah. up for it after Barnstormer. Right. And maybe that'll like s- like spark an idea that he wants to do it again. Yeah. And I'll buy the Genie Plus individual lightning lane because it's like $11. And yeah. it would only be two of us. Right. Because um, can you do child swap? I guess you yeah. you do child swap, but you have to buy three of them. You don't have to buy the fourth one, right? Right. So, like, because Jackson just rides it twice. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I would do that. We'd do child swap and see if he'll ride it twice. But, like, we'll ride Barnstormer first and then be like, all right, what do you think now? Yeah. And we can go over there. But do you think they would give me the $11 back? If he decides not if to If he do decides it. not to ride it? Like, oh, it was too scary for him. Because they always, know. there's, like, a big thing on the front there that's, like, no refund. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I'd, I've never heard of them being able to refund a genie individual plus. Lightning yeah. Lane. Hmm. yeah i don't know i don't i'm not well well versed in that category that's a but, question yeah because i wouldn't want to like pay for it and then not happen you're just throwing waste 22 dollars or at yeah. least 22 dollars. i don't know i mean i feel like disney tends to be very like accommodating obviously like they're very understanding mm-hmm. but you can never really make assumptions either you know what i would do in that situation hmm I'd give somebody like a return, like here's a certificate for you to come back when you are ready. Yeah. They used yeah. to do stuff like that when kids weren't tall enough. I don't know how much they do that. They do that at Universal still. Do they? Yeah. They used to do it at Disney because I know that like uh, some kids have it for a rock and roller coaster. Yeah. We still have one for Rip Ride Rocket. Oh, nice. Yeah. Luke um, is very ready for a rock and roller coaster to come back. It's been down for refurbishment and he's like missing it. Yeah. We went to Hollywood Studios the other day too. Yeah. And Jackson was like out front playing cornhole. You know, he would probably love uh, Slinky. Yeah, I, we looked at it. He wasn't into it. He wasn't into it. No, okay. this was also before we rode Barnstormer. Right. So maybe his opinion would change. Maybe. What's nice about Slinky Dog, I feel like for kids, is that they can see the full coaster. Uh, I think that's one thing that gets a little bit like, I don't want to say spooky, but a little intimidating. Yeah, he did say that the darkness. Yeah, for a like. kid is, and I mean, it's really dark inside the queue for um, Seven Doors. Seven Doors. Like, my eyes have a hard time adjusting sometimes yeah. when you walk through there. Um, so maybe that would be something that he'd be more prone to. Maybe. TBD. Here's, well, I'll tell you this. Speaking of Hollywood Studios, this is our High Dad Soup moment of the week. Okay. Good transition. Jackson, um, we went to Hollywood Studios. And he wore his goofy hat. Oh, nice! It's like a jet. You know yes. the goofy hat. It's like the bill is Goofy's nose. Yeah, you sent me a picture. Snout. And we were going there, and we we're gonna meet Goofy. <clears throat> and he's like, "We're like, do you want to have a pen to have Goofy sign that?" And he's like, "No." So he doesn't have a signature. But we did meet Goofy. That was fantastic. But we also rode 
Star, store, star, storm, 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 star, star tours. I was like, why is my mind blanking on the name of this ride? Star tours. Yeah. At Hollywood Studios because they have the new scene. Right. Did you get some? Yeah, we got. Oh, you told me this. Yeah, we got Andor. Yeah. We got Ahsoka. We got Space Whales. You got so many. Yeah. How but are I, the space whales? The space whales were great. I okay. thought we were going to go riding one because one opened its mouth and tried to eat us. And I was like, yeah, let's go. We're going to space travel in a whale. But then we didn't. No, oh, that's when we you got like, out. jumped to hyperspeed. Or... Yeah. Well, then we just got out of it and then like mm-hmm. then jumped. We did a we did the spin. You know how Ahsoka's ship, I don't know what it's called. I don't remember. But either. it has the rotating wings that go around it. Yeah. 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 She did that. And then R2 is like, yeah, woo, and like flipped the star speeder over. That's pretty cool. You got a lot of th- well, this was just one ride. Just one ride. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And I think that that's what everybody was getting that day. Uh, okay. Because that's what, every, like, we heard most people be like, oh, we got Andor, Ahsoka, and Space Whale. So you were just missing Mandalorian. Yeah. That's really but he, cool. Was he not there before? No. No. I, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. He was um, new that the day that these new scenes aired. I gotcha. haven't done it. I, I really want to get to Hollywood Studios to do it before I go to Disneyland, but I don't think that's going to happen, so. Maybe it will. Maybe. You never know. TBD. But... The thing that happened on that ride was Jackson got picked. He was the rebel spy. Oh, yes. That's what you sent me a picture of. Yeah. And it was the funniest thing because he already had his 3D glasses on and he was wearing his gigantic goofy hat. Yes. And it, the picture showed up there and I was like, who in the... That's Jackson. <laughs> and I turned to him. I was like, that's you, buddy. You're the rebel spy. And he's like, what does that mean? <laughs> and I was like, it means that we have to... Like, you're the mission. We have to protect you. And he's like... Jackson's like, what am I supposed to do? What do I do? The pressure. And I was like, you don't have to just sit there and like, we'll ride it and we'll we'll save you, buddy. Don't worry. And then like the light starts flashing on him when the, the droid comes up and like looks at the screen and like does that double take. He's like, yeah. oh no, that's it. Um, And then, yeah, it was just exciting. Cause was, was Vader there? Mm, I don't remember because I was looking at Jackson oh, okay. during this first scene. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. No, because we didn't do the push-pull thing. He just We just kind of like left. I just like wonder who off. is after the rebel spy in that moment. That's a good question. Because it? it's been Kylo Ren and Vader, I think. Yeah, I think it was just like Imperial guys. Oh, okay. Because the stormtroopers were there for sure. Okay. And the, the, the probe droid like attached itself to the windshield. Interesting. Very um, cool. And I was like, afterwards, this was the greatest part is I was like, Oh, buddy, you were the rebel spy. And he goes, I know it's because of my hat. <laughs> and I was like, that's a good point. It probably was because of your hat. It probably drew attention to him for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Which wow. that's not what you want to do when you're the rebel spy. No, you got to take that goofy hat off. Right. You got to protect yourself. <laughs> Who and knew then... that the rebel spy would be wearing a goofy hat? Right. I didn't know that that was part of Star Wars lore. I know. And we got a big button that said, I'm celebrating being the rebel spy. I and I was that. like, this is. That's iconic. We're not supposed to do this. Why? I just the rebel spy. Oh, I was supposed to just go around telling Did it. Did he wear that button <laughs> through Batuu? Yeah. Oh, no. We were just like bebopping through Batuu. But at that point in Batuu, it's fine because the rebellion is over anyways. Is it? Yeah. Well, yeah why are because, the stormtroopers and Kylo Ren walking around? Because they're searching for people who are part of the resistance. Mm. <laughs> are the resistance people not rebels? No. The rebellion ended. The we're rebellion getting very specific with Star Wars. Ended. <laughs> the rebellion ended. And, and then the First Order was birthed, which we don't really fully know how. Okay. It was born out of the Empire. Wait, hold on. Okay. So Clone Wars were with the clones, right? The Jedi are with the clones. Right. And then we start to notice that what old was his face? <laughs> uh, Palpatine. Right. Is bad. Right. And then we decide to rebel against him. We rebel against the Empire. Right. Which was established when Palpatine took over the Senate. Okay. Yeah. And then we beat him. Right. And then he came back somehow. Right. We don't and now we are that happened. We're not rebelling anymore. We're resisting. We're resisting him. The First Order. Because... We are already free as well, rebels. We yeah. did it. And now they're trying well, to get us a, back in. And we're like, no, we resist. Right. There was a new Senate after the the rebellion won. Okay. And the new Senate then gets destroyed by the First Order. Remember when the like lasers go to the planets that were a part of the new Senate? No. Oh. But <laughs> lasers. Do you remember? Uh, well, not really lasers. I don't remember what it's called. But remember in, um, I think it's episode seven so the force awakens 
I think it's that episode when the planet like yeah it's when the planet like absorbs the power maybe of the sun and then like it's like almost like the Death Star but it's not the Death Star it's a whole planet you don't remember any of no, this. I don't remember that. <laughs> I'm never in the middle of Clone Wars right now okay and it is so hard to follow because they're just like yeah there's a lot of details. jump around yeah and then we met this like family of the father the son and the daughter right yeah I and I was like where did these people come from and why weren't they an issue before right yeah yeah, sometimes I'm just like, this is a little too much for sure. But yeah, just but, like that weird looking giant guy from Rebels. Yeah, where he was like, hey, he look. What did he look like? He looked like a bull or something. I don't remember what you're talking about. Okay, <laughs> he's just like, I'm neither light nor dark. I am. Yeah, it gets complicated guy. for sure. It's a lot. There's a lot happening. But yeah. Speaking of Star Wars, I cannot wait. I know I've said this so many times already, but Disneyland, man, it's calling to me. The season of the force has started at Disneyland and I've seen things. I've seen merch. I've seen the job of the hut popcorn bucket. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be out there and see it all. So you'll be there soon enough. Don't you worry. (laughs) Um, the high dad soup. This was a, a wild week. That's for sure. Um, you know, and my, the thing that pops into my brain immediately is, um, Luke's just crushing it with soccer right now. Oh. He scored three goals last weekend. Three, Yeah, so proud of him. And then he scored a goal today. He had a soccer game today. And he's just like, he's so proud of himself, and I'm excited to see it. So yeah. He loves, to play, Luke. he loves to play goalie, too, which is terrifying as a parent. And he's scoring goals? Well, Kicking like... Kicking across the entire field? <laughs> no. <laughs> They'll, like, rotate him out. Oh, they okay. want the kids to, like, have the opportunity to play, like, all of the positions. But he, like asks to start with goalie and wants to spend as much time in goalie as possible okay um but as a parent you it's like stressful watching your kid play goalie for sure yeah because you're like "Mm." people are kicking balls at his face (laughs) well and just like it's a lot of pressure yeah yeah but proud of him he's He's doing doing it yeah um you guys went to 1900 park fair went to 1900 park fair just opened back up on what was that wednesday yeah the 10th and Wednesday the 10th. Was it just you and Jen? Just me and Jen. Okay. And we got the breakfast is only until noon. Right. Our reservation was for 11.55. I love it. Walked in five minutes before they shut the doors. It was probably pretty busy. Yeah. Lots then, of like bloggers and influencers out there. Yeah. People started working their way out. Yeah. And then we pretty much had the restaurant to ourselves towards the end there. Food was good. Food was good. It was... So I was comparing it to Disney Cruise Cabanas uh-huh. or Marceline Market, and it was better. It was better than oh, the wow. Disney Cruise Buffet. That's good to know. But it's not like, you know, it's still buffet food. Do you like Boma Breakfast? I'm trying to remember back to Boma Breakfast. Oh. I love Boma Breakfast. It's one of my favorite breakfasts at, at Walt Disney World. What's special about it? I, it? Some of the food that they have is like, um, I would say, like more African-inspired Okay. But then, like, they have Simba waffles, which are fun. I remember these Simba waffles. Uh, They're circular with Simba on them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just really enjoy Boma breakfast. They have the sticky buns. Okay. So good. I'll have to... Well, I'll make a reservation. I'll try it again. I'll get back to you. I'll go. Okay. (laughs) You're just inviting yourself to my breakfast. (laughs) I I came up with the Boma breakfast. (laughs) That's okay. You can come. You can come. Um, We're going to take a plane there. We should do like a breakfast challenge. What's the best breakfast at Walt Disney World? Well, that's a lot of breakfast. <laughs> in a very short window. <laughs> Jeez. What are you going to do? Just eat every breakfast item in the world? I don't know. That's too much. You have to go for what makes it different. Like you can't do like the same things. Okay. Oh, like we tried another Mickey waffle. It tastes the same because it's the same. Yeah, they're exactly the same. But yeah, you'd have to do like... Most breakfasts are the same. Differentiates. You have like breakfast platter. Yeah. The like, bounty platter, that's what it's called. At like... um. Ohana, they have the bread. The bread. <laughs> the Hawaiian sweet bread? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what's different there. Okay. So we're just going to make a reservation for Ohana <laughs> to try the bread. Spend a bunch of money just for <laughs> Just, just one, uh, one piece of bread. <laughs> Thanks, we're done. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So you guys, off to the next one, over to Chef Mickey's for their ice cream, I guess. I don't Cinnamon know roll. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yeah. No, that would probably get pretty expensive and unreasonably expensive. Um. But anyway, I will tell you this about 1900 Park Fair. I want to go back just for one item, not because it was good. Oh, it actually was not good. Oh, no. But there was something about it that made me want to eat it more and more. What was it? 
is the vegan chocolate chip muffin. Why did you want to eat it more and more? I don't know. Oh, wow. It yeah. was not the best chocolate chip muffin I've ever had. Okay. It was chewy. It fell apart. It like stuck to the wrapper when you pulled the wrapper off. Mm. But it was... Still good? I think so. <laughs> I don't know what it was about it, but I was like, I want to eat more. I'd that. imagine that they only serve that for breakfast, probably yeah. not like a dinner thing. Yeah. Because we'll be going soon. Yeah. For dinner. I don't. I'm, I'm going to eat it again because I want to know why I'm so like intrigued with this chocolate muffin. Interesting. Did they have the strawberry soup for breakfast? Yeah. Did you have some? Yeah. So good. Yeah. It's like refreshing. They changed the recipe. Oh, they did. Yeah. Actually, I heard that. I heard so, that on the day of coverage. The our server was not sure why they changed the recipe. She thinks that the company that used to make it went out of business. Did you taste like a distinct difference? I don't remember the other. The other was yeah, I, I don't remember. Well, we had it. So we were given the opportunity and blessed to stay club level for one night at Grand Floridian a couple of years ago. Um, in fact, when we stayed there, we hung out with you guys. Um, it, I, I want to say it was like 2022, maybe. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, in club level, they had like small little portions of the strawberry soup. And I'm thinking that that's the new recipe. Okay. Because the old recipe was from before the pandemic. Pre-pandemic. See, yeah. I, I don't know that I have a frame of reference pre-pandemic. That I'm sure I had it, but I I don't. Remember. I know that I had it, but I don't remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But cool. apparently it was like a like a cult classic. I feel like they'll have it for dinner time too. That's like a thing. That's like a yeah. staple. I don't know. They do have, they like I said, we're going for dinner. Yeah. And they definitely had it for breakfast. We haven't been for dinner yet. Yeah. I can't wait. Cannot wait to be there. I am very excited and... We bought Ethan a little Bruno costume, and he's going to wear that. And I can't wait to, like, he loves costumes, so he'll be so excited just to be dressed up. But he has no idea about, like, the costume or what's happening or who will be there. And so when he gets to see Mirabelle, he's going to light up, and I yeah. can't wait. Just to let you guys know, the th- the four characters that are there are Mirabelle, Cinderella, Aladdin, like Prince Ali Aladdin, yeah, and Tiana in her new outfit, which, which looks so cool. correlates to Tiana's bio adventure. Does... Prince Ali Aladdin does is he can you ask him questions about life not as a prince or is he fully in prince mode I think you can ask him questions about being not a prince because I think that he's oh it's prince at the end of the movie right yeah true true true, yeah because he marries Jasmine yeah okay makes sense and so they have a all of the characters are what are people that made wishes and had their wishes granted I love it I I'm I know a lot of people have had things to say about missing what was there before with like the tea party yeah. and how that fits the theming with Grand Floridian. And I get that. Um, I don't, I guess I don't fully understand what the specific theming of Grand Floridian is because it's very it's like Victorian era seaside Florida. That's right. why I don't understand why the tea is such a big deal. Well, and to me, like even because I know that there's Mary Poppins around sprinkled in through yeah um, Grand Floridian, but Mary Poppins is not Victorian seaside Florida. No, right. That's <laughs> like, what I don't understand. Like I think Narcusis does it really well. Like it's very like you could tell it's very seaside in Narcusis, but it's an elevated style for right. sure. Um, but like Citrico's is very Mary Poppins esque, and to me that's not. That, that doesn't have anything to do with Florida. Yeah, I feel like they're kind of jamming an IP in there. Yeah. And people, this is interesting because people are not mad about it. People have been mad about Disney jamming IPs in right. places. But they're not mad about Mary Poppins. They're not mad about Mary Poppins and the Grand Floridian. And I get that, like, Mary Poppins is quintessential Disney, and the Grand Floridian is, to me, quintessential Walt Disney World. Right. But I'm, I don't, I'm fine with these new characters. Also, why is the Splash Pad Mad Hatter? Right. I don't know. Why is the theme to Alice in Wonderland? I don't know. Why is tea such a big part? Maybe Victorian. The Grand Floridian. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like Florida is so different than that, though. Right. Like, where in the state of Florida can you go and be in a Victorian style beachside area? Um, the, I don't. The Biltmore. Where? It's like Deltona. I guess it's not that close to. Like I've been to the Breakers in West Palm Beach. Where's what's that? The Breakers are like it's like a very fancy resort in West Palm Beach, but yeah. it's not to me. It's not Victorian. Like Florida doesn't give Victorian. Right. I think it used to. Really? Yeah. In 
1836 to 1901. <laughs> like, along with the rest of the country. <laughs> yeah, with our, uh, during the reign of Queen Victoria. <laughs> I just feel like Florida has so much more ethnicity, and that's what gives a little bit of edge. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Wearing sunglasses. <laughs> it's a cool guy. It's just different. It's like Florida is so, Florida is so multicultural that Victorian is not what a representation of Florida looks like. Right. But I could, I understand. So from what I gathered, the three monorail resorts, the first two with a uh, contemporary yeah. tied to Tomorrowland. Right. And then Polynesian tied to Adventureland. Okay. And then there's a loose tie Grand with Floor. Grand Floridian tied to Main Street. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. So, but the the classical American is is um like themed, not themed. What's the word I'm looking for? The resort itself, like the buildings themselves, are modeled after a resort in California. Yeah, Southern it's modeled California. after like three different resorts. Yeah, and they're not in Florida. There might be one in West Palm that it was know. modeled after. I'd have to look it up. I've never seen it. But the, the also the buildings are named after the keys. And the inside, there's certain areas that they give off very like beachy seaside mm-hmm. vibes. But I don't know. Anyway, the keys, I guess there's maybe some Victorian style styling in the keys. Yeah. So I can see that. Anyway, so we just talked for a long time. There's a lot of <laughs> Grand Floridian stuff. <laughs> I, don't know, I, 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 I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's good. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about the new characters just because I feel like they're very diverse and I'm, I'm here for that. And I think that it's really cool that we have Tiana there in her new costume to yep. really like get us excited about Bayou Adventure. Yeah. And she was that. kind of alluding to when we talked to her, she's like, I hear there's a big party coming up and we're like, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. I, I wondered what like she was saying. Yeah. She that. said that she was like going to had to gather ingredients for a big party. Ooh. So I was at Magic Kingdom last night with the family and we walked over to, uh, and this will kind of transition well into the news portion, but we walked over to, uh, Tiana's Bayou Adventure just to see what we could see like around the area um, because yesterday yesterday was Friday they did make an announcement about the names of the new stores that are coming um, oh. to the area outside of the attraction I didn't hear this oh you didn't no I, the last news for Tiana's Bayou Adventure that I saw was the frogs okay we named the which frogs so much fun which those are the first with with Lewis those are the first characters that we come in contact with I think they said oh okay Maybe I'm wrong with that. I know that Lewis is the very first character that you come in contact with. Okay, that's exciting. I did get to find, go back and watch the, uh, we call it Imagineering on YouTube, and Lewis looks so good. Yeah. Yeah, I cannot really wait. Really good. I haven't watched this week's episode of that show yet, but. So before you get into the stores, these frogs, they are introducing, and you'll like this. Okay. An uh, Afro-Cuban beat. Oh, that's exciting. To the ride. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So like they're frogs and one of them is modeled after a tree frog a cuban tree frog oh that's exciting so yeah their name i have it pulled up their names are felipe myra mondo and uh isabel is it myra she's the frog she's the tree frog okay myra yeah yeah and then mondo is the biggest or or mayra i don't know how they would pronounce it probably mayra is it m-a-y-a m-a-y-r-a oh okay mayra yeah Um, but yeah, that's exciting. They, the frogs are hilarious and the memes with the frogs have been really funny on the internet because the frogs have this like, like awkward grins on their faces and good people have been using that on Diz Twitter and it's been really funny. Diz Twitter is a totally different, like, I wouldn't suggest going there, (laughs) but it can be brutal, but it does, it does provide entertainment from time to time. So that's exciting. I really do love how many like how much detail they're giving us for this attraction yeah beforehand it's gonna be and, nice. and it, it'll be impossible to remember all of the details because there's so many characters in this a lot of people have suggested that because i believe that there's an animated series coming for tiana there's um, a book for sure yeah and so I, a lot of people have suggested that like some of these uh characters that will be in the attraction will be in this new show um which would be fun it'd be fun to get to know them even more so yeah um, so I'm very excited. That's going to be fun. So the names of these restaurants are shops. Shops. So um, there are two shops. So the one shop, I, I'm, I'm not going to remember what it was called when the attraction was Splash Mountain. Okay. But it's the attract. It's the shop that is like 
outside of the attraction. In both of them are outside of the attraction. In the Briar Patch. Yes. Okay. Do you remember what that was called before? No. I think it was probably called the Briar Patch. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, that's now called um, Critter Co op. Okay. And the signage for these stores is out. Like it's, it's. You can see it. Yeah. We took pictures next to it last night. Okay. Um, it looks really cool. And then they've changed the window displays, uh, oh. which was fun. And so we took some pictures of that. And it's cool. Like, in one of the windows, there was um, all kinds of like different in, like ingredients, ingredients that you would put into gumbo, ingredients okay. that are just like more southern themed ingredients. And then there was a note um, in the window on top of the ingredients, and it says, "Dear Lewis and friends," which is exciting because I feel like I, and friends, yeah, it's speaking... well, that could be you, yeah. But I think it also maybe some of these characters that they're introducing us to. Okay, like I really think that. Lewis and these characters are going to have like a major part of this attraction. Like that, that is, there's a, like the storyline is going to center a lot around Lewis and these other characters. Right. Um, it says, I hope you enjoy these ingredients and that you always remember what good food does best. It brings folks together. All my love, Tiana. So that's exciting. I'm really like, it was just so exciting to see some of the details and like, it's just really building the excitement up for the opening of this attraction. I think this is going to be really iconic. I could also see some lights in the trees as we walked by. Ooh, like fireflies? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're very cool. I think at night this thing is going to light up and it's going to be so beautiful. Yeah. So. They also delivered uh, an old Ford panel van out front. I That's going to that. be like Tiana's delivery truck. Yep. Yep. Excited to see that. And they've been testing throughout the day, but then the other night they were testing it at night. Ooh. Yeah. So. Did you see the flash, the camera flash? I didn't. Mm. No, no. But they had the music playing, and oh, yeah. So that was fun. I think I think we're getting very, very close. I would imagine that like we will start to get some sort of announcement about previews soon. Yeah, we have to be soon. Yeah, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be when one of us is out of town. <laughs> that's just the way that it I is. I feel like that's the case as well. So. Um, I had a friend that had sent me something that was like, here's my guest. Here's my guest. First two weeks of June. Of when, that's when it'll open. Based on block out dates of cast members and a uh, media preview in mid-June maybe. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Oh, so the, do we know that there is a media preview happening? Well, we don't know anything about that. Oh. But that's just their guess. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because of the cast member block outs. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So, a Makes lot of stuff sense. happening in the first two weeks of June. It would be such a dream to be able to be a part of that media preview. I just, that's my dream. Just so you know. Like, on, okay. it, peeling back the curtain. Yeah, peeling back the curtain of, like, Nick and his, like, content creator dreams. To be able to, like, be there as media for the opening of an attraction. Yeah, it'd be pretty sweet. You've done it before. Yeah. Yeah. I've done it for whole lands. Well, I guess I've done it. I've done it for, like awesome places like bush gardens and you know things yeah. like that but i i love disney so specifically to be able to do that for disney would be a dream so okay there you a go dream is a wish your heart makes that's true so when you're fast asleep though so better i do when i'm dream, fast asleep too i dream about, about these things <laughs> um thinking of dreams or not thinking speaking of dreams Ooh. phantasmic <laughs> at disneyland park we knew that it was returning may 24th um and it, there are official show times on the disneyland website now oh okay so it is it's coming back 9 p.m and 10 30 p.m whoa feels so late yeah they run it late yeah that's one of the reasons that we've never seen it yeah you guys are early to bed we're like people <laughs> wait here until 10 and it might not happen you, you you've closed down disneyland before though right no, I don't think so. What? Oh, I love it so much. Why do you like closing things down? These well, people are trying to go home. I'm a night owl, first of all. Oh, no, they know they're going to be there late regardless. I mean, yeah. I'm not trying to like stay super late, but I'll stay till the park closes for sure. Okay. Um, I There's something special about closing a park down, but also at Disneyland, I just feel like entertainment stays out even later than what we get at Walt Disney World. Like yeah. I've ridden on the fire engine down Main Street at like 11 p.m., and then gotten off and then seen Mickey and Minnie riding on the fire engine down Main Street at 11 p.m. That's ridiculous. What? It's amazing. That's too late. People should <laughs> be in bed. I guess they have, because we've seen, we're tried to watch the fireworks. I don't remember if we ever actually saw the fireworks at Disneyland. Yeah, we have. What? Yeah, you've had to have seen the fireworks at Disneyland. 
Yeah, well, they're they're very difficult to catch. They are. Well, and they don't happen on most days. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. I am really, really, really hoping that we get Wondrous Journeys when we're there for D23. Mm-hmm. It is my favorite fireworks show. Okay. So it won't be happening when I'm there in a couple of weeks. Also, speaking... But you will get to see Fire of the Rising Moons. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> The explosions of the rising <laughs> sunshine. I don't think it's <laughs> okay. I think it's fire something like that. Fire of the rising moons. What what I will get to see is Pixar Fest and they released the foodie guide for Pixar Fest. And let okay. me tell you, I'm very excited. A lot of different churros, which is very typical for Disneyland. They always have fun different variations of churros. Right. Um, but some of the like one thing in particular that like really caught my attention, they have a it's not a hot dog, it's a sausage. And it's inside, instead of a bun, it's inside of a baked potato. Okay. Yeah. Looks fun. It has like pulled pork on top, but you like eat it like a hot dog, but not a bun. I I wouldn't do that. You're going to, you would eat it with a knife. I would eat it with a knife and fork. No, I think I got to go for it. (laughs) It's not going to stay together. Probably not. Right? (laughs) We can all agree on this. Yeah, probably not. You don't eat a baked potato by picking it up like a taco. Why not? Why not start? Because it's going to fall apart. <laughs> so do tacos. That's why I don't eat hard shell tacos. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't like your hands getting messy. I don't like my hands getting messy. Yeah, I'm going to try it. I'll send a, I'll take a video of it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so that's very exciting. I, mean, I, I the, the foodie guide looks fantastic. The bummer is that um, they have like specific booze that they're going to be opening at DCA. Booths. I know, I say it weird. I thought you said booze. No, bo- booths. Booths. Did I say it right? You said it right. But okay. when you said it, you said it fast. You said they got specific booze at DCA. And I was like. <laughs> I've been I told that I, I I pronounce things differently sometimes. I, I, I do question and wonder sometimes. I was taught to speak English by my mother whose second language is English. Okay. So I, I don't know if sometimes that's why. But I, I've Maybe. been told I say tour wrong. Tour? Yeah, that's how people say it. You're allowed to say that the way the tour is fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to say it how I'm going to say it. And it's not yeah. going to change. But um, but yeah, I've been told it's different. I think that people are allowed to say things how they want to say them. Oh, I agree. As long as it's not changing the meaning of the word. Right? Uh, and as long as people can understand. Whereas in that case, I didn't understand that you were saying booze. booze. I thought you were saying booze. <laughs> there is a lot of a booze. Booze <laughs> coming to DCA, but the, and they're all themed to specific Pixar movies, but they're not opening till like May tenth. And Pixar Fest starts before that. Yeah, why aren't they opening? April twenty sixth is when Pixar Fest starts. I don't know. It feels strange. I feel like they should be open, and I'm bummed because now I won't get to experience them. I wonder if it has to do with the change from Food and Wine Festival at DCA to Pixar Fest. That's probably it. They probably have to take the booths from did i do it right that time yeah yeah yeah. we know what you're talking about okay um from from food and wine festival and then like transform them into the booths for Pixar. yeah because they don't have as much store as we have where it's like behind epcot right you're just like just mm, wheel out stick those booths out there yeah. <laughs> and put in the new nobody booths. cares just <laughs> leave them out there that'll be fine we've run by them during run disney events yeah yeah um so yeah that's exciting speaking of run disney next weekend I will be... Um, oh, you got your surprise. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what the surprise is. <laughs> the surprise has already been revealed. The surprise so. is... I'm dressing up as Pumbaa. Pumbaa. Yeah. Me, okay. and my, me and my friends are Pumbaa, Timon, and Zazu. Okay. Um, You're going to sing, right? When I was a young warthog. Well, we're specifically trying to channel the hula scene. Like, oh, okay. What do you want me to do? If you're aching for some bacon? <laughs> yeah. Yup, yup, yup. I'm going to have an apple. Oh, okay. Yeah. A real apple? Yeah, probably. Okay. And then I'll throw it away at the beginning and then maybe ask Francie to bring one to the finish line for more pictures. You have to carry it with you the whole time. I won't do that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Ten miles? It's an apple. Yeah. Not like it's an encumbrance. I'd probably eat it all. Ooh, that's a good word, encumbrance. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you. Sophisticated. <laughs> it's not like you can, you're just holding an apple. Yeah. You could you could play with it. <laughs> it's like throw it up and down while you're running. Give you something to do Try when to there's nothing happening. No, I'm not saying that. Whilst running. You could kick it along. That feels like a safety hazard. Why? What if I Have you seen what people run in? Yeah. That's a safety hazard. <laughs> not an apple. You just got an apple. Um, speaking of Run Disney, since this is partially a Run Disney podcast. <laughs> for all of you who are training, just know you're doing a great job. You're doing it. You're getting it done. You're going to, you're going to, 
get out there and you're going to give it your best shot. And all of that training that you have put into the race, it's going to pay off. Unless your name is Tim. No, because you, you did a great job. I, well, I have, I'm supposed to be training right now for the next run. Yeah. And I, <clears throat> and I started to, but then things happen. Right. Sometimes babies don't sleep. Life. Yeah. And then I end up not. You have time though. Yeah, I know. But like, I feel like. Yeah. The way that I feel when I go out and I run now, I feel like I don't have enough time. The thing is, is that, and I tell people this when they come to me and they're, and not, not that I'm a training expert by any means. I think that because I've done dopey, people are like, you were the master. Help, please. And I'm like, no, no, actually. But um, I will say, and, and, and experienced runners will definitely say this as well. There's such a difference between running while training and then running on race day. Yeah. I Massive felt fantastic race. the entire 10K. Your adrenaline is going. You're happy to be alive. You're out there. You're doing it. It feels totally different. Like There's a lot to see, too. If someone told me right now, like, we finished recording, and they're like, go run 10 miles, I would dread that. But yeah. I know that come next Sunday, I'm going to be like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> run 10 miles. Yeah. So, anyways. Oh, uh, run Disney. So, registration happened for dopey or not for dopey but for marathon weekend this past week and let me tell you the servers were bogged down i don't think there were any technical issues but there were so many people who did not get into the races yeah because it's ridiculous it is really blown up for sure and i know that like like i am part of the problem yeah (laughs) because i post about it and it gets people excited and then they want to do it and they want to experience it which i'm okay with like i want people to want to do it and want to experience it because it's so much fun but well but also the way that people do it is they have multiple devices open right right. and that bogs down the server for sure yeah so like it, and then it opens it up again too. Right. So you just have to stay on it yeah. and hope that you can get in there. But this one wasn't even a stay on it thing. Like, like thankfully I had a friend who was also trying to get in and she was able to get through and get me registered for dopey because by the time that my computer made it in, there was only the half marathon left. And I went to go in and register uh, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law. And by the time I clicked pay, it was gone. Hmm. Everything was sold out at that point. And you didn't get it, even though you had like selected it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I went in, put all their info in, and when I went and finalized it and went to click pay, it was gone. Man. It really sold out very quickly. Our family was going to run the 5K together. We didn't get to do that because by the time my friend got into the queue, the 5K was gone. Um, it sold out very, very quickly, which is, I mean, it's... That's marathon for you. Yeah, it's, it's understanding. It comes right after the holidays. So I think that probably, it's probably one of the, I mean, it is the busiest weekend, I would imagine, out of Run Disney. Yeah. Because that many more people have time off around that time. Or it's easier for them to take off right. as an extension of their holiday break. So. Or it's like their New Year's resolution. Yeah, for sure. So, And Dopey. Dopey is a, is a thing that draws people. And I know a lot challenge. of people are, are trying Dopey the challenge for their first time ever. And I can't, I'm so excited for them. It is truly such a thrill. I will tell you this. Yes. After this next run... I'm done. Oh no! Come on. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I do feel like you're gonna love the next Halloween run. Like you're gonna be. I feel like I'm not because it's at Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. That's so that, no so offense they... to Disneyland or anything, but it's just there's not. A, you have to go out on public roads. Yeah. So there's not gonna be like characters on on right. Yeah. The 408 or what the four four five zero. What you need two. to do is do a half marathon at Walt Disney World. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks though. <laughs> One day it'll happen. Uh, once I, I I'm okay. Speaking I of Walt Disney World, another thing that I wanted to talk about, and honestly, I don't really have interest in spending a lot of time on this because, well, first, before we get into that, there's a tease. Before we get into that conversation, okay. Quick note: Walt Disney World is doing um, VI pass holder days. Oh yeah, I'm excited for these. Yeah, so free snacks. Yeah, starts May first, runs through June eight. 18th it's happening at the restaurant restaurant marrakesh marrakesh in the morocco pavilion at epcot which is no longer a restaurant it's just a building now where where is that the very back of the morocco pavilion okay Okay. yeah that makes sense i was trying to picture it between where they do like the morocco food booth for the festivals Mm -hmm. and then obviously there's that what's the name of the restaurant that's like spice road table yes that's by the water yeah so, and but this like, is restaurant okay. Marrakesh. Is do you know where the Aladdin meet and greet is? Yeah, or the Jasmine. Yeah, it's behind that. Okay, 
Okay. So that we'll makes... just go to the very back of the of the pavilion, and that there's a restaurant back there. I like that it's there. Last year, it, this this this. So it's like a lounge for pass holders, and last year they had like I think like drinks. Yeah, drinks and snacks. And That's snacks. what they have. They're gonna yeah. have that this year. They're doing it again, but last year it was in the um the land pavilion, at the bottom. Oh, that was just a. That was wasn't the la- was that the lounge? It was the lounge. Okay, and but it was so small. Yeah. And it was right outside of living with the land. And it yeah. got just very congested down there. Because people were trying to eat. People were trying to ride Sorin. People were trying to ride living with the land. Yeah. I like that this is more secluded and set apart. Well, this is... So when the pandemic... When Disney first reopened from the pandemic, the Moroccan government, I guess, was like, no, we're, we're done. We're pulling out. We right. don't need to have a booth at Epcot. And so there's not a sponsor for that pavilion. That's why there's no right. rest... rest uh, that's why there's no restaurant in there. And the uh, Tangerine Cafe, which is out front, is the food festival booth now. Right, right, right. And Spice Road Table is just run by Disney. Right. Um, So that restaurant back there has been closed since the pandemic. But there was a point where they just like opened it up. Yeah. And it was like, I think it was a mask relief zone. Just being maybe. able to like hang out. And nobody went in there. And I knew people that were just like, nobody in here. I'm going to go in there, take my mask off, have a nap. Nice. People just like sleep in there. Nice. Wow. Hanging out. That's like cool. A nice spot to sleep yeah. in, my, in Epcot. Well, that's exciting. I mean, I feel like that that sounds like a, the perfect spot for this lounge to be happening. So Yeah. I'm excited. Obviously, we'll go check it out. May 1st is when that starts. I I might be able to go on May 1st, actually. Yeah. TBD. Um, I, Just so you guys know, I'm intentionally saying TBD a lot. So, Okay. Here's the other conversation that we'll get into. And I don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time with on this because I want to spend so much time. I know that you do, but it is such a, like this week, it has become such a divisive topic Mm -hmm. and people are so passionate and angry about this. And that sort of frustrates me because I think that the people that are the most angry about it are the people that potentially were the ones abusing Abusing the system. Yeah. So DAS, the, or DAS program, the disability access service program is changing at Walt Disney World. Right. And at Disneyland. Um, And just so you know, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. The person that I typically get a lot of my information from on the internet is Scott Gustin. If you guys don't follow Scott, if you have X and want to follow somebody who gives a lot of Disney information, follow Scott. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's he's fantastic in his reporting and he breaks things down very simply. So a lot of the information that we're going to be reading right now are from him, is from him when this news broke and he pulls it from the Disney website. Um, so this is effective May 20th at Walt Disney World and June 18th at Disneyland Resort. Um, so it says DAS was, and I'm going to say DAS, that's what a lot of people just refer to. Yeah, as. DAS Pass. Yeah. DAS was previously defined to assist guests who have difficulty tolerating long queues due to a disability. The updated system is intended to accommodate only those guests who, due to a de- de- I'm sorry, developmental disability like autism or similar, are unable to wait in long lines. And so the the difference there is that in the past, people could basically just say that they feel nervous or stressed waiting in a long line. N- not necessarily just stressed, but they have anxiety. So from what I had heard, yeah, and this is all secondhand because I've never experienced it, I've never used a DAS Pass, I've right. never delved into this world. Right. But apparently the reason that they're having to change this is twofold. There were apparently um, people offering tours where you could use their DAS Pass to get to the front of the line. Which is wild. And then they were charging money for these things too. Right. And then there were also, I guess, and this I, this is all hearsay. I'm not saying that this is actually what's happening, but this is just things that rumors that I've heard mm-hmm. that there were travel agents that were offering getting you a DAS Pass no matter what your situation, as an incentive to book through them. Right. And so I guess there were like YouTube videos and stuff like that out there. On how to do it. On like exactly when they ask you this question, you say this. When this gets asked, you say this. I am more frustrated about that than I am about the changes happening. Right. So obviously my family, we have a child who has autism. Right. We use DAS. Um, And... There are moments where we don't have to use DAS and there's moments where we, we will use it because of Ethan's uh, developmental disability. Right. Um, and so it does frustrate me. And I say, like, I don't really know 
I have been through the process of registering for it before, so I know what questions they ask me. It's always been very hard because sometimes they'll look at you and say, without saying what the specific disability is, tell us what may, some of the issues may be that your child would have in the queue. That will get complicated. That That's complicated for me sometimes because I, I want to be able to just look at them and say, he has autism. Right. And so with autism, there comes all kinds of different, you know, um, p- well, potential challenges. Yeah. The most glaring to me, and I know that this is stereotyping and yeah, putting every, into a box. Every child on this, uh, every person on the spectrum is different and, and, and faces different, um, you know, different. I don't want to say challenges because it's not always a challenge, but they face different, you know, situations. Yeah, for sure. And so I know that there is there is a portion of people with autism that have an issue with sensory. Correct. And Disney's lines are sensory overload. Correct. Yeah. So it makes sense, right, that they would want to skip those lines. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And and so you know, and and, and personally, I don't feel the need to go into specifics on some of the ways that Ethan could be triggered because that's for our family and for that's our business for sure. But you know, there's a reason why we have been using DAS since Ethan has joined the family. Right. And we continue to learn more and more about Ethan and what like some of his triggers are. I mean, Ethan has been with our family for two, a little over two years. Like we continue to learn more about him and he's continuing to, to develop and grow into the human that he is. And so like it's, it's not, there's not like a formula for it for sure and that's what that's why it's referred to as the spectrum right people on the spectrum could be anywhere on the spectrum and so anyways all of that to say um disney is basically specifying that das is for guests who due to a developmental disability like autism or similar aren't able to wait in a long line so they are they're basically narrowing it down right um and they're going to be working with, it said th- they'll be working with uh, Inspire Health Alliance so that when you are registering, you're going to be doing it beforehand. Like you're going to be doing a registration for DAS um, virtually right. before arrival to determine your eligible- eligibility. In the past, you could do it at the park. Right. There will still be, I think, the opportunity to do it at the park, but they're definitely pushing people to do it virtually before they get to the park, before their vacation, before their trip, uh, before your visit. 120 days out. Yes. Um, another thing, so some notable changes, and Scott lists these um, on X, but uh, DAS advanced pre-arrival attraction selections will no longer be a default offering to every DAS guest. So beforehand, you could go in, if you were registered for DAS, And the cast members could help you virtually select certain attractions for the day of your visit. Um, That won't be a default. Current DAS guests will need to reapply. So come May 20th, anybody who is registered in in DAS will need to um, reapply for it. Party size max is four. Beforehand, I think it was six. Right. But there is a... Exceptions for family. Exceptions for family. Right. Yeah. If you're a family of more than four, obviously they're not going to want your family to be split up. Which is great because that means that the person has to be in your family. Right. Or right. one of your registered guests. Right. Exactly. Like staying with you at the resort or whatever. Right. right. Yeah. And and another note on DAS, if, if, if you aren't aware, you can't book an attraction for DAS that your person in your party who is the dash is registered to is not going to be riding right like, like it, there it, are attractions that ethan is not interested in riding or is not tall enough for we don't get to use das if ethan's not riding the attraction right. can't because, use it for tower of terror right because that is what das is for although ethan i shouldn't say that has because, yeah written he's ridden tower of terror um and he's enjoyed it but if there is yeah if the person in your party is not going to ride the attraction and that person is the one who is registered for DAS, then you can't use DAS for that attraction. Right. Um, and then the other note is that DAS enrollment eligibility increases from 60 to 120 days, which is huge because you basically have had, and for people who are local who utilize this system, you've had to re-enroll every 60 days. Um, it's nice that it's increasing to 120 days. Yeah. It extends that much longer. And Four because months. the enrollment process is a little more involved now, hmm. um, 
it's nice that you don't get it, that they're they're extending that so um so here, originally you had to do it six times a year now you'll only have to do it three times a year. right here's my thing um people are up in arms about this and people are frustrated and they're angry I get that there are people out there who have intense anxiety mm -hmm. that a queue could be very overwhelming to them. I don't right. know how Disney's handling that. I don't know, like, based on information that we're seeing, you know, it, it seems like that would not constitute as a reason to have DAS anymore. Right. Like I said, I don't know what that looks like. I've seen people talk about getting doctor's notes. I, I don't know that Disney will accept those. It is interesting that they specifically say autism mm -hmm. but then they also say or similar right i don't know exactly what similar means right um but if you are someone who has intense extreme concerns the best thing that you could do is take your case to disney and say how do i proceed with this moving forward but be expected like expect the response that you will not qualify for das right Unless you are approaching them saying, my child or I or a person in my party has autism, that is the only thing that is specifically outlined by Disney that is a reason why they will give you deaths. Right. And we should also mention that the queues at Walt Disney World are big enough to accommodate wheelchairs. Right, right. And any sort of other... That is a common misconception. DAS is not for people with like mobility issues. Right. That is a totally separate situation at Disney. Right. They handle that very differently. This is specifically, like Disney has said, for people with autism or a developmental disability like autism or similar. Right. Those are the exact words from Disney. So, um, and, and there are people with autism that can handle the cues as well. And my recommendation would be go through the queue. You right. know, like just because you have autism doesn't mean that you necessarily need DAS. I think that that's what Disney's trying to say is like, save this for the people who need it. Right. Um, and so it's unfortunate that so many people have, uh, clearly they're doing this in response to people abusing the system. Mm -hmm. And it's sad that people have done that. It's sad for my family knowing that like, there's a real reason why we need this system. Um, or it, it, not that we need it. It's just helpful. It makes, right. it makes our park visits like, I, I don't want to say it makes our park visits more enjoyable, but it, 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 it's a, it's a system that was given to us by Disney, knowing that our child has developmental disabilities and can help with that experience in going to the most magical place or the happiest place on earth. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm thankful for that. And, the thing that's funny to me and interesting to me is that when Disney makes a move, everybody has something to say about it. Right. Universal changed their system a couple of months ago. I never heard any outrage from it. Right. And their system is intense. They, beforehand, they specifically would ask you what, what the developmental disability was. Now you have to enroll in a third party system at Universal and you have to provide that third party documentation showing what that developmental disability is. Right. So I've had to literally take Ethan's diagnosis from his doctor and submit it online to this third party, showing them that it, it, there is indeed a diagnosis there. Mm -hmm. That's not what Disney, as far as I know, that's not what Disney is asking for, but it's just funny to me that like when Disney makes a move, everybody's like, Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? And Universal's like, oh, we did this a couple of months ago. Right? You know, it's just fascinating to me. But anyways, I said we weren't going to spend a long time on that. But it is a big, it's big news this week for sure because it's affecting, it's it's affecting a lot of people. Right. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Right. <laughs> like right. It's, it's affecting a lot of people who are mad because they were ones who were abusing the system and they're not going to get to abuse the system anymore. And it's right. like, that's what Genie Plus is for. <laughs> so right. if you want to skip the lines... You pay for Genie Plus. I know that people get frustrated by that because they're like, FastPass used to be a thing that was free. And it's like, sure, yeah, but that's not what it is anymore. So, Well, here's what I hope. I hope that Disney hears their outrage yeah. and offers them a year pass to Genie Plus. Yeah. I would pay for that. Oh, that would be fun. 
You mean, like, okay, not offering like complimentary. Not complimentary. But, yeah. Like, give me that option to I, I have that an add on on my annual pass. 1,000%. I would love that. I'd pay for that. Yeah. Yeah. How much? I don't know. Because if it's, if it's $29 a day, that's a lot. It could be a lot of money. It could be a lot of money. Yeah. It could be almost not as much as your annual pass. I guess yeah. you got to like figure out annual pass is what percentage of a daily ticket. Yeah. And then take that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I would pay for it, but I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. So that's big news for sure this week. There's also massive news with international parks, and we don't have to spend a long time of it because neither of us have been there. But right. Disneyland Paris is getting all kinds of fun things, including a new name for Dis- Walt Disney Studios Park, which is like... It's like their MGM. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, wow, MGM. What their Hollywood that? Studios. <laughs> It's yeah. their their second park. Yeah. And from what I've heard, that's like that park typically tends to be underwhelming for a lot of people, but mm-hmm. they are getting a lot of upgrades. And so they're really putting a lot of emphasis on this park and it's going to be referred to as Disney Adventure World. Ooh. Yeah. Did you not know this? No, I haven't heard this. Oh, well, yeah. It's getting a new name. Disney Adventure World. It's got a new logo. Um, I, I wish that I could say more about it. I just have never been there before, so I don't know many details around this park. But yeah. from what I know and just watching other people's stories and coverage from that park, it tends to be the one that's the most underwhelming to people. And so. I'll tell you my story about Disneyland Paris. Oh, what is that? When I was in high school, my parents, God bless them, they booked a trip oh, no. to Disneyland Paris and left me at home. <laughs> oh, sad. <laughs> So they, they went without you? They went to Disneyland Paris without me. Wow, that's tragic. Well, it's okay. They were, my sister was working there, and they were just going to visit her. So, Yeah, but, but did it make you sad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's okay. You're not like harboring bitterness. I'll, I'll go one day. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Mom and Dad. But, you know, I oh, understand. Man. They were just going to see my sister, so yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, parents just need that. Yeah. Yeah. They just wanted to go to Paris yeah. without, without me. Without their kid, yeah. Without... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Just, the at the, just at the kid, you were like, are you kidding me right now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. One day you'll go to Paris. One day, one day I'll go to Paris and I'll eat that last mango. <laughs> oh, see, my brain went somewhere else. Oh, what were you going to say? Mm, you probably won't understand this reference. <laughs> I love this idea. <laughs> the hills. The hills have eyes. When Lauren Conrad didn't go to Paris. Oh, Elsie. Yeah. Mm, sorry. She chose Jason instead. I hope people understand that reference. I don't know anything about it. Lauren eventually did get to go to Paris. She went with Whitney. So. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Whitney. They also shared concept of a new um, spinner ride coming to Disneyland Paris Resort, and it's Tangle-themed, and it looks really fun. It's got like... Let me see this picture. It's got like the um, the oh, boat. Oh, the boats, the lanterns. Yeah, and it looks kind of like the lantern scene. Okay, that's fun. Yeah, I think it's fun. And it's a little flat ride. Yeah, it's, like teacups or like I think it's like teacups, like junkyard jamboree. It's not. It's not a whip ride, right? No, I, I, probably probably I, teacups. Yeah, I don't know. Whip I don't rides know. like like maters. I don't know that you would be able to like spin the boat though. I don't know. Yeah, that would be kind of wild. Yeah. So, oh, and then I don't. I did not get the opportunity to watch this full video, but flipping from Disney to Universal, oh. did you watch the the fly through of yeah. of uh, Stella Nova? Yeah. So two the two or two. How many times? R2. 22. <laughs> it is you. It is 55 you. hamburgers, 55 hot dogs. The Universal Nova Resort is opening January 21st, 2025. And Universal Terra Luna Resort is opening February 20th. Stella Nova. Stella Nova. I'm so sorry. And Terra Luna. Yes. Um, opening. <laughs> you totally threw off my computer. All right. Do it again. <laughs> Take two. And go. <laughs> Leave that in. Uh, Universal Stella Nova Resort is opening 20, January 21st, 2025. And Universal Terra Luna Resort is opening February 25th, 2025. And they did January it. 21st. Uh-huh. Okay. And tw- and February 25th. You know what's wild? I booked that a while ago. Yeah. And they just charged me for it like last week, like right before this announcement. Interesting. Then they finally charged me. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um. It seems very like star th- space themed. Yeah, it's celestial themed. Yeah, that's a good word. That's, yeah, that's a better word for it. There's a lot of like cosmos yeah. action happening. Oh, we'll get back to that in a second. Go ahead. That's it. That's all I have to say. Okay. I don't By have... the way, no, it's not all I have to Did say. Did you watch the fly through? The fly through was amazing because of the little AI people walking around. Oh, okay. They were so dumb. <laughs> 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 the the bartender was the same every single time, oh. and he poured the drink exactly the same every single time. 
Sad. But then there was like, just like the most random stuff happening. Yeah. There's like, you know, a lady complaining at the front desk and you could see she was like, <laughs> I don't know. Why would they have that in there? Like moving her arms around all wild. And then there was just a person walking around the pool deck with her headphones on, like dancing. That's tragic. And I'm like, why is that tragic? The, the the arguing is what I'm stuck. Oh, with. okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was like, she's like living her own life. Yeah. That's no, not good, good for time. her. Good for her. For Fully dressed on the pool deck. Everybody else is in their bathing suits, but she's got her <laughs> headphones on, dancing around Let like her, a silent DJ. Live her life. Yeah. yeah. The rooms I saw, like some of the like base rates, maybe are just going to be like 147 yeah, and real low. Yeah, I love that. It's nice. That is one really great thing about Universal, uh, like the Universal Resorts. That they are so well appropriately priced. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, okay. Did we talk about the cabins last time? How they're selling them? Uh, I we, think so. I think you've talked about okay. that before. But yeah, that's you, it. You that want one? Don't I want? I want one. Yeah. Yeah. I want to turn it into an RV. I thought you wanted to do a podcast. Yeah, both. <laughs> and then tow it to Fort Wilderness and camp in it. Oh my gosh, that'd be hilarious. You'd be like, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> yeah. It would take a lot of work. Yeah. That's what we t- oh, we talked about it in a live show where I was like, should I do this? It would take me like a month. That would be the only thing that we'd show in a month's worth of videos <laughs> is me refurbishing this cabin. I feel like that'd be fun. It'd be a little like HGTV action. Yeah. Yeah. It would take so long. <laughs> um, I'm I We are going to the cabins this summer and I can't wait. I'm, not the new ones the old ones. well the old ones but like the new ones will be open and so i'm obviously going to ask if there were like any last minute cancellations to try to get into yeah new ones. you know you never know you do never know right what's going to happen is i'm going to be in one of the new cabins and you're going to be in one of the old ones and you're going to be like what right the heck? am i checking dates before yours too yeah. <laughs> and i'm gonna be like <laughs> this always happens okay we're gonna end it with this like rapid fire Okay. We posted on our Instagram story. If you don't follow us, that underscore tracks underscore pod on Instagram. We posted on our story for this or that questions. Okay. So we're going to fly through these. That. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been watching the new uh, Fallout show on Amazon. Sometimes Real it's good. Like doing a podcast with the child. <laughs> yeah. And I okay. love it. I love you for that. And go. <laughs> that. Um, we also are going to be recording a Patreon episode. If you're interested in checking out Patreon, the link to our Patreons in the caption. But all right, here we go. Pineapple or watermelon Dole Whip? Pineapple. Same. Yeah. I don't want watermelon Dole Whip. Mm-hmm. Francie would want that. Um, I can't speak to this, so this will just be you. Okay. Disney Wish or Disney Fantasy? Fantasy. Okay. I've only been on the Wish. Yeah. Fantasy is better in my opinion. Mostly, and I got to qualify this, I think that the Wish is a better ship. Okay. Because it's newer, the food is better, but you can't do a seven night on the Wish. Okay. Maybe that'll be a thing eventually. Yeah. Um, Haunted Mansion or Pirates? Uh, Haunted Mansion. Pirates, obviously. Well, so it's it won't be a thing on the Wish because the treasure takes over that seven night. Oh. Uh, so, which is fine. It's the yeah. same ship, but. Yeah. Different. Different. Um, well, this one we're going to be opposite on as well. Rope drop or sleep in? Oh, I like to sleep in. Oh, yeah. You're a morning person though. I am a morning person, but I yeah. prefer, it's hard to get the entire family. If it's just me, if I were a single man, <laughs> I would do a rope drop. Yeah. I would rope drop at Disneyland for yeah, sure. Because you're already awake. Yeah. And yeah. And because also I don't get to go to those parks as often. Mm-hmm. I'm spoiled at Walt Disney World, and I realize that. I'm like, eh, why would I get yeah. up early to go do attractions that I can do whenever? Okay. If you changed it to rope drop or close down, I would 100% rope drop. Yeah, that's what- I that's, don't want to close down. I thought for a second that's where this question was going, and you would rope drop, and I would close down. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I would just sleep in. I would Because there's plenty of time to do. Shut down the park. I love yeah, it. I don't need to do it's that. It's my favorite. Get out of here. <laughs> Toy Story or Cars? Cars. Toy Story. The should the movie I'm or the sort of land? offended that you would pick car. I picked the land. Oh no 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 yeah I yeah the land is better, for sure. But the movies. Yeah, I think I like cars better. Oh my gosh, I'm angry at you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Lion King or the Little Mermaid? Lion King. Okay, good. <laughs> That's stressing me out. Thanks. Um, corn dog or Ronto wrap? Hmm. Where's the corn dog from? I'm gonna say Disneyland. Ah, corn dog. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I would probably. Uh, yeah. 
Corn dog. Give me a breakfast Ronto wrap. That's good. It's Give me a breakfast corn dog. <laughs> what does that even mean? Sausage. Not one. Yeah. No, just a regular corn dog With, for like, breakfast. Syrup. <laughs> yeah, pancake wrap sausage. That's good stuff. Only ride the rides or only eat the food? Hmm. I'm going to go rides. Yeah, I feel like I'm rides as well because. Although the food is always changing. Yeah. But I can't for imagine. For the rest of your life. Yeah, I can't imagine not being able to ride the rides anymore. You could still eat food. Right. Just right? Not the you Disney have food. to eat food. You, well, yeah, you just have to like leave the park to eat the food. Okay. Yeah. Pretty good restaurants I'm, out there. Yeah. I, I'm Wendy's. Well, <laughs> okay. I was thinking something better than that. Mickey Bin- <laughs> but- <laughs> That's where my brain went. <laughs> I'm hungry. Uh, Mickey Beignets or Mickey Waffles? Oh, uh, what's yours? Waffles. I'm thinking I love waffles. I love the beignets, but waffles are so good. I love waffles, but Mickey waffles have been off recently. They've been extra chewy. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. I haven't had them in a while, but I just love Mickey waffles. Yeah. But beignets are great too. I probably do waffles too, but just like the beignets are good. Yeah. And I've been thinking back to those Tiana beignets. Those are really good. I wish that they would have those all the time. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. The heck. Um, living with the land or a journey into imagination? Mm, the land. Yeah, the land all day, every yeah. day. Are you kidding? I don't need to spell skunk. I don't need figment. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> all right, a couple more. Polynesian or Grand Floridian, since we oh. talked about it for so long today. What room? I, no, I think just in general. Just visiting? Yeah, the resort in general. Grand Floridian? And what? No, why? I don't know, man. Francie would pick that too. Polynesian? This is hard. So I like the food at Grand Floridian a lot better. Really? I like Polynesian food better. What? Like Captain Cook's? No, the Thai (laughs) coconut meatballs? No. Those are my favorite. They were too greasy. No. I Um, had them last night twice. (laughs) (laughs) What? You just like left and came back? No, like I ordered it and it was so good that I was like, I need a second one of those because the boys wanted to eat my food, which is par for the course as a dad. And I was like, and the problem is, is that what happens is, see what had happened was one kid was like, can I have some? And I'm like, sure. But then it's like vultures. Like, like Ethan was like on the other side of the like grass area. And like, it's like he turned around because he knew Luke was taking a bite of my Thai coconut meat- meatball and he like sniffed it out and he saw it. And then I watched him. He like made eye contact and he immediately like came right at me and was like, can I have some? And I was like, <laughs> geez, of course, of course you get angry about this. Yeah, sometimes I just want my bowl. <laughs> Man, Joey. But that's it. That's the one food item that is there that no, is tying no, you Ohana, to the Ohana. I love Ohana. Ohana. Get and then, here. and I love Kona Cafe. There's a, a, you can get at the little stand outside of Kona Cafe, you can get an iced coffee with coconut and it's delicious. What if the Grand Floridian is like doing it for you? I love Narcoosies. Narcoosies is good. Centricos is good. I've Grand Floridian Cafe Centricos. is good. 1900 Park Fair is good. More food options. Like one more food option. That's more. <laughs> There's no qualifier for more. It's just more. Don't talk about Polynesian like that. It's my favorite Disney resort. Can you rent the Grand One from the Polynesian? What? I don't think you can rent the Grand One anyways. But What is that? It's the yacht. Oh. It's not even a yacht. It's just a big boat. Big boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they call it a yacht. I do love the Grand Floridian. I do. But to me, it's the Poly. Hmm. It's the vibe. Uh, big Thunder or Mine Train? Big Thunder? Yeah, same. Who's picking Mine Train? Um, I, probably my kids. Mm. Yeah, probably. Have they been on Big Thunder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do think that Mine Train tells a really good story. Okay. It's good theming. Yeah, the theming is good. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. You looked at me like I was dumb. <laughs> no, no, I was just like, what? <laughs> it's not really a story. You just like start out and then you're in the cave and then you're back. <laughs> that's it. You're in a Mine Train. Yeah, you're... We, we mined. Wow. <laughs> There's a story on Big Thunder. There's a, a, a explosion. What? There's a T-Rex. This is going to be a, a saloon. This is going to be a hot take. Guardians, Cosmic Rewind, or Tron. I know what Guardians. you're going to pick. Yeah, I would pick Tron. Okay, well, that's yeah. fine. My, most people would pick Guardians, and I totally get it. I think that if you're putting the two attractions next to each other. Guardians playing Conga ugh, or Tron. So good. Euphoria. Can I skip the pre-show? Yeah, sure. Okay, then yeah, Guardians playing Conga. Okay. But to me... See, pre-shows don't count for me. It just takes so long. Guardians is such a process these days. I know. We wrote, we wrote it during the last After Hours, and it was like, 
20 minutes just to get through the line. And yeah. I'm like, what is, I know nobody I'm on spoiled. this ride. I know I'm spoiled because I live here and I get to do it all the time, but I am so over the pre-show. I'm so done with, what do they call themselves? And some random person's like, drunks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just done with it. Right. I'm sick of it. Sick of it. <laughs> I'm being too negative. I need to stop that. Yeah. Um, Mickey pretzel or Dole Whip? Dole Whip. The pretzels have been dry recently. Yeah, I agree. Monorail or Skyliner? Skyliner. Mm, I'd pick Get it. out of here with the monorail. I'd pick monorail. That thing is, what are you, like a 1988 <laughs> Oldsmobile? Come on. <laughs> Would you rather ride like in a new Kia I, or a 1988 Oldsmobile Skyliner can Bonneville? Freak, the Skyliner can freak me out sometimes when that thing gets stuck Pontiac and Bonneville. you're just swinging out over the road. Yeah. No, I it's hate exciting. it. exciting. No, that's not exciting to me. The monorail falling apart is the exciting thing that you like. I don't think the monorail's ever fallen apart. It falls apart <laughs> all the time. <laughs> There'll be people that'll t- send selfies from the parking lot. are like, oh, I got a monorail piece. <laughs> Look at this. A <laughs> wheel fell off. It oh, almost no, killed me. It. Don't say that. Um, that's scary. Um, wow, a couple of people put toys or cars. Toy Story or cars. Okay. Cheeseburger spring rolls or cheeseburger pods. Steam pods. Ooh. That's a tough one. Ooh, yeah. Depends on my mood. I'm going with the spring rolls. So I love the spring rolls, but they are very greasy. I was going to say, you know that I don't like my hands being dirty because <laughs> I'm Howie Mandel. You got to bring gloves. Because I got to bring <laughs> gloves and sanitizer. But the, the steam pods, you don't have to worry about that. But they, the the bun does get cut in your, caught in your teeth. Yeah. And I don't like that. It's one and of the reasons like, I don't eat Oreos. I don't know how to describe it other than like <laughs> making what the bun can sometimes do. It's like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It gets stuck in your mouth. Yes, it, maybe it's a little too dry. Okay, but it's not though. It's, it's not moist. dry. It's it's too fluffy, so yeah. it gets stuck in your stuck yeah. in your teeth. <laughs> it's like Oreos. Get out of here with Oreos. Stop. That's it. my hot take. Do not. All right, we could last, live without Oreos. Last three: happily ever after or phantasmic. Why is that even a question? Obviously, happily ever after. Yeah, yeah. People would pick phantasmic. I know they would, and I agree. I'll. I'll I'm not nothing against them. You just insulted them. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> happily ever after. Like when I first saw it, I was like, this is the greatest show I've ever seen. I love Happily Ever After so much. I watched it last night from the poly. Yeah. When I ate my Thai coconut meatballs. When you didn't eat them, <laughs> somebody else was eating it. Yeah. <laughs> the children. Oh, um, children. <laughs> Sleepy Hollow Corn Dog or Casey's Corn Dog Nuggets? Um, neither. What? Give me the nuggets all day, every day. I don't really like the nuggets. No, love them. With the fake cheese and some ketchup. I don't really as like I fake cheese. As I sit and wait for Happily Ever After. I'm not a fan of fake cheese. I love fake cheese. still have that fake cheese from the run and sitting in the pantry and didn't touch it. I'm going to eat it. (laughs) Okay, I'll give it to you. You can have it. Why? That's tragic. You haven't eaten that. Yeah. Wow, it's it's, it's insulting. Why is that insulting? It's fake cheese. I I don't need it. (laughs) What is... (laughs) Okay, here we go. Last one. Oh, wait. I picked the corn dog, by the way. There's two. Two more. Two more. Two more. Okay. You picked the corn dog? Yeah. Not the nugget? No. The so, nuggets are. I feel like you get so many more, like so much more with the nuggets. It's like you corn get like dog is huge. riding every ride by yourself in a day or riding one ride with your child and they choose. Riding. Child? Yeah. Child. Yeah. I, I would. A child. Me too. I wouldn't want to ride by myself. I don't mind riding by myself, but I like his reaction better because I've already ridden all these rides. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'd pick the kid, even though they take my Jeez, time looking at me. <laughs> okay, last one. Stay in Cinderella Castle. Yes. No, you 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 said yes too quickly. Or become a Club 33 member. No, I don't care. Club, uh, that's fine. You would skip Club 33 yeah. to stay in the castle? Yeah. yeah Which Club 33? Like the one in Disneyland or ours? Uh, wait, what? Isn't it like, is it not interchangeable? No. What? Do you have to be Club 33 at both? Yeah. What? And uh, it's harder to get, you have to wait till somebody like retires from the one in Disneyland. I didn't Here know it was that. easier to get into. I thought it was interchangeable. I thought if you were no. Club 33 at Walt Disney World, you could go. To, can you not? You don't have access to Club 33 at Disneyland? Nope. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. I would pick the castle. Yeah, I'd pick the castle too yeah. because. That's like once in a lifetime. I can. There are. Like you can meet somebody that can get you into Club 33. Right, 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 right. But you can't just like meet somebody that'll let you stay in the castle. Right. That just. That's for. So I've only met one person that stayed at the castle. Do they put people in the castle like. Is there someone staying there every night? No. Why? Because it's special. But pick a pick a random family. Do you it's think they do that? Special. No. Uh, sad. I want to be that. It's my dream. Right. 
All right, well. I'll introduce you to somebody that stayed there. Okay. I want to know. It's Denise. She's I... done. She, Denise from Mousetap. She has a whole post about it. So. I have a friend who's been. Not like hiding anything. Been in there and got to like tour it. But, oh. But didn't stay there. How'd they do that? Uh, it was like a media thing. No. Oh. Yeah. What the heck? It was years ago. Jeez. Yeah. Um. Well. That was great. Fun. That was fun. You guys did good. I'm proud of you. Glad uh, we're, we're together again. Together again. We're going to record our Patreon episode, which we need to do soon because... It's running out of time. It's getting late. <laughs> I have a birthday party I have to go to. Oh, whose yeah. birthday? Mine? Happy birthday, Tim. <laughs> your, t- your birthday was already over. My mm. birthday's coming up. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. July 31st. <laughs> no. Do you remember my birthday? Yeah, I do. You do? May 9th. Wow. Look at us. Yeah. You've come so far. I knew that. <laughs> and you love conga? And, and I'll be at Disneyland. Thing... I won't be at Disneyland on my birthday, but... You're just... It's broadcasting your plans out there aren't you i i've just said i won't be at disneyland on my birthday i've narrowed it down <laughs> that's okay i feel i feel okay about that i'm excited to be out there if you are a west coast person and you see me at disneyland please say hello i i would love to hear that there are people on the west coast that listen to that tracks so that would excite me yeah and and you will be a stranger to me but because of what i discussed oh. in this episode previously if you're sitting next to nick on a plane <laughs> talk to him for five hours please do Tell me your life story. Tell him your life story. <laughs> All of the gritty details. We'll talk about the Enneagram. We'll talk about family. Huh? That's everything. it. Just those two things. No, the, 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 uh, the opportunities. I want you to them. teach Nick calculus. Mm, don't do that. <laughs> yep. Do it. <laughs> talk to him about, that's when I'll put my headphones. <laughs> talk to him about uh, like uh, gluons. I'm fine with random orcs. facts. That's fine with me. But like not calculus. Okay. <laughs> I know my calculus. Okay. Well, it says so you plus we, me This is where we stop. Us. Do you know that song? Nope. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for tracking with us. Yeah, bye.